you have mail. Let's do it. Let's talk about custom networking. Oh! Right, we find ourselves back in Challenger once more, and in this insanely amazing tutorial, we're going to be finally talking about custom networking, a highly anticipated tutorial, basically, because the topic has come up, you know, a few times, but I've always been resistant to show it. But now, now part of this Thirst system, we're now also adding custom networking, and it's going to be freaking amazing. So for this, what we're going to do is we are going to go into our tutorial mod package, right click new package called networking. And inside of there, we're going to make a new Java class. And this is going to be the mod messages class. Now you can call this whatever you want. It can also be mod packets or mod networking, something like that. I personally like mod messages. And here we need a few static fields. First of all, we need a private static field of a simple channel from net microforge network simple channel called a instance. There we go. We also want a private static int packet ID, which we're going to initialize to zero. And then we also have a private static int ID method, which we're just going to return packet ID plus plus. Now what this craziness means is basically just that every packet we are going to register is going to have an ID. And if we just, you know, wrap this in this method over here, then every time we call the ID, method, the packet ID is also going to be increased. So it's just going to make this a little bit easier for us. Then we want a public static void register method. This is basically where all the magic happens and all of the registering takes place. Now, first of all, we need some boilerplate code. And then afterwards, what well, we're just basically going to well change a few things. So first of all, we want to say ch simple channel net equals network registry dot channel builder and then we want to say dot named with a new resource location of course once again tutorial mod dot mod id and then we're just going to call this the messages and then we want to activate the network protocol version which is just a string supplier and we're just going to call this the network protocol version one usually the version basically refers to whether or not the packets are still compatible with each other so for example if you were to change a packet then you would most likely increase this we're just going to keep it at 1 1 1.0 for the time being and that's going to be okay we want to say that client accepted versions is going to be s true and then the server accepted versions is s true as well absolutely amazing and then we're just going to call simple channel. And that is it. The simple channel has been created. And we want to set the instance over here equal to net the simple channel we've just created. And that is pretty much what we need to do. Now we can already add two public methods over here. So public static and this is going to be angle brackets SMG and closing angle brackets void. This is going to be sent to server. So this is a message that's going to be sent to the server. And how do we send a message to the server? Well, we do instance.send to server and then passing in the message. So you can see MS MSG in this case, right, is a generic, but it's not extending anything. This is because anything can be a message, basically. So this is the general idea of this, but we're going to see basically what type of message, well, we want to create in just a moment. But then we also need public static once again, MSG over here, void send to player msg message and then also of course we want to specify the server player to which we're actually sending this and this is going to be instance dot send packet distributor dot player with exactly this one and just passing in the player and the second parameter here is the message so those are the two void methods that we're going to need in this case so that is already pretty awesome indeed. Now the register method right here, we have to call this in the tutorial mode class. And that is very important. We need to do this outside the NQ work runnable. Now I've been told that, you know, it should be inside of the NQ work runnable. If I put it inside, then the mod messages are not properly registered. So I basically want to caution you. Maybe it does have to be in the NQ work runnable. I have not got it to work in there. I had to do it outside of it. So keep that in mind. So I'd be really appreciative if you left a comment and explaining this if you know what this craziness means. Right, and now in theory, what we want to do is we want to create a packet. So, so first of all, we're gonna make a complete example packet not used in the Thirst system, just so that you, well, basically have seen this once. And then afterwards, we're gonna create the first packet we're going to need to drink water. But first of all, in the networking package, new package called packet, very important here. And then instead of there, we're gonna make a new Java class. This is just gonna be the example and we're gonna call this the C2S packet. First of all, writing packet correctly would also help. There we go. So why C2S? Well, this basically because the packet goes from the client to the server. So this is usually how you wanna denote this 
and then you are sure to basically know what is going on. In here, we want a public example packet constructor with nothing in it. We also want a constructor that is the same one, but has a friendly byte buff buffer over here as its parameter. We also want a public void to bytes method with a, once again, friendly byte buffer over here. Now those are gonna be empty because in the case of the buffer, we actually only need to, well, basically do anything with a buffer. If we want additional data sent from the client to the server, then that has to be saved inside of the byte buffer. We're gonna see this in the last of the four tutorials of the Thirst system, basically, when we have to add the synchronization to it as well. Then we're gonna see, you know, adding stuff to the buffer as well, but for the time being, we actually don't need this. And then here, we want a public Boolean called handle. So this is a public Boolean method called handle with a supplier of network event dot context. Just called supplier. We're just going to import the supplier class alt enter java util function over here. And then inside of it, we're going to say network event dot context, just calling it context equal to supplier dot get. And now what we can do is we can say context dot inq work we could put a runnable in here and now this is the crazy cool thing oh, of course at the end of here we want to return true there you go and then here comes the coolest thing everything inside of this onq work runnable right here we are on the server so everything that happens on this onq work runnable even though this packet was sent by the client here we are completely on the server side so anything that the server can basically do is what we can also do so what we, for example, can do is we can say server player, player equals to context.get sender, because of course there's one sender, right? So we can do this. We can even get the level. So we can say server level, level, and then just say player.get level. There we go. And now just for this example packet, what we want to do is we just want to spawn a cow right at the location of the player when they basically send this packet. So we're just going to say entity type dot cow dot spawn, passing in the server level, passing in null null player dot block position we want to say mob on type let's do command that's going to be okay and then true and then false and that should in theory spawn a cow now of course i've previously mentioned this spawning a cow can only be done on the server of course because you know if the client could spawn a cow then you know they could just cheat on cows on mass and the game would be horribly broken in this case it can only be done on the server that's why it's important here that we are on the server, basically. Now, next, we need to register this packet. This, once again, happens in the mod messages class over here. So we're going to say net.messageBuilder. We're going to say example C2S packet dot class, then calling the ID method, then saying this is the network direction play to server. And then after the closing parentheses, we want to call the decoder. This is going to be the example C2S packet colon colon new. We also want to call the encoder, which is going to be the example C2S to bytes. And then we also want to call the consumer main thread, which is going to be the example C2S packet colon colon handle. And then last but not least, call the add method. And that should be pretty much all that we need to do. Now our custom packet is basically registered and we can send it to the server via the send to server method. Now, of course, in this case, we actually already have somewhere where we can very easily, well, send this over. And that is, of course, in our, well, client events right here, right? When we actually press our key, our custom key. Currently, we're just outputting something into the console. How about what we do is we say mod messages dot send to server, and then we're just sending a new example C to S packet over there and then just see what happens. So this is actually all that you need to send a packet. Now, what you need to do is you need to be cognizant of where you are, right? Of course, we know that the input key event over here is always on the client, right? So we know that here we are on the client. So this is always only gets called on the client so we can then be sure that this actually is sent from the client to the server inside of the packet we know that right here inside of this context on work runnable we are always on the server therefore we can spawn the cow so in theory what should happen is that if i join into the game and i press my drinking key then a cow should be spawned at my location let's first of all go into the game and see if that already works all right, so we find ourselves back in Minecraft and just to remember this in the controls and the keybinds, we have, of course, added the keybind. Now it says drinking water, but right now, if I press the OK, we should see a cow spawn. So let's see. 
and there we go a cow has actually spawned just to make sure that this isn't like a ghost cow you can see i have the raw beef i can throw it around so this pretty much ensures that hey this isn't just you know a client cow so to speak it actually it does exist on the server as well so let's just spawn a bunch of them so you can see i could just keep pressing o and cows keep spawning so that is a really cool you know example packet just to basically show the well general example of how this might work so let's continue with the thirst system now now the example packet is all fun and well but you know it's not going to well get us what we want we of course want the thirst system so let's just actually copy over the same class we're just going to drag it into the same package while holding control and we're going to call this the drink water c2s packet yes that's going to be fine and then we're just going to delete everything that is inside of here because we basically want a few other things to happen the general way the class is built is going to be the same now let's just think of what we actually want to have happen when we press the drink water key the general idea is we first of all of course maybe we want to you know check if player is near water right that might make a lot of sense and then we have two different things if the player is near water we might want to drink it and if the player is not near water we might you know want to uh, output something else so let's first of all actually get these two because those were actually very good variables to have right we have the player and the level who knows if we're going to need it but let's then say okay so if the particular player has water around them right and then of course we definitely need the player for this and we also, of course, need the level for this because we somehow want to check, okay, surrounding the player, there has to be something. So this is a method I'm going to be able to introduce, but let's just keep it like this for the time being. And then we're also going to have an else, right? Because we want something to happen if there's water around the player and if there's not water around the player. Now, we're just going to keep this as an error for the time being. We can introduce this method in just a moment. Let's first of all go through the entire logical chain of what is about to happen, right? So if we find player... If we find water, maybe what we want to do is we want to notify the player that water has been drunk. Sure, why not? And then we can also think about, well, what, what we also want to do is, well, maybe increase the water level slash thirst level of the player. Absolutely makes a, makes a lot of sense. Maybe what we also want to do is, right, when we do this, we also might want to actually play the drinking sound. That also makes a lot of sense, right? That could be pretty cool. These are pretty much the three things that we want to do when the player has water around them when they press the drink water key. Now, what do we want to do when we press the drink water key and there's no water around? Well, pretty much we also want to notify the player, but this time that there is no water around. Okay, that's fairly self-explanatory. And then maybe what we also want to do is just output the current thirst level and maybe we also want to output the current thirst level here when we've increased it just so that it makes a little bit more sense so that the player knows okay this is how much thirst i currently have because of course we don't have a hud yet that's going to be happening in the last of those four thirst system tutorials okay so i hope that this roughly you know explains the logic here now let's now introduce this method over here so we can see we can just create this method and it is a boolean method has water around them now i've already basically prepared this and it's going to be absolutely really freaking awesome so the way that this works is we're going to return level dot get block states right? and you can see this takes an aabb this is basically a bounding box now what we can do is we can take the bounding box from the player so we can say get a bounding box over here and we can then inflate it so we can increase its size so we're going to inflate this by two for the time being and what we then have is basically this blocks get block states gets a stream of block states now with this we already get a stream of block states around the player distance two so now we have a bunch of block states around the player so what we then want to do is we want to say hey filter these block states to say state state is and we're just going to say blocks.water so we just want to say hey just get me only the ones that are in water so now we have a stream of block states that are only water right so we only keep those for which this predicate right here basically is true we're just going to convert this into an array and we're going to say hey if the length of the array is bigger than zero then of course this is true basically because we have looked around all of the block states around the player we're saying hey only keep the ones that are water and if there's at least one of them in there then we know of course water is around the player now to make this a little bit nicer even we can introduce the size variable here and we can change this one so maybe the player can upgrade something so that the size changes from two to three or something like that for the time being this is just a little bit cleaner that way right so now we are basically checking whether or not the player is around so that's pretty cool so let's now notify the player how do we do this well we can just say player send system message component let's do dot translatable and what we're going to do is we're just going to introduce a new string variable over here over here so we're just going to say private static final string 
And this is going to be the message drink water. And we're going to call this the message dot tutorial mod dot drink underscore water. And then we're just going to dupe. And we're going to use this. So message drink water as the message over here. And let's just also do with style just so that we have some style chat formatting. And let's call this the dark aqua so that it looks a little bit cooler. We also want to play the generic drinking sound. Now, I am going to just copy this over because that's a little bit easier for us to do, right? It's nothing too crazy. Just call the play sound variable here on the server level, passing in these different things. And now the drinking sound should also play. Now, increasing the water level, we actually can't do just yet. Same with the outputting the thirst level because, well, of course, the player doesn't have this saved just yet. So we can only do those two things. That's fair enough. But let's also output when there is no water around. Now here we want another message. So let's just duplicate this. This is the message no water. And we're just going to call this the no underscore water message. So that, that's going to be it. And then let's just do this. And let's actually make this red. Now in theory, those are the only things that we can do for the time being. The last two here we can't do. Same with the output of the current thirst level. Because of course, there is no current thirst level just yet on the player. But what we can do is we can translate those messages. Let's go into a underscore US JSON file, similar to what we have done with the keys over here. Let's just add the messages as well. This is basically going to be drinking water. And then for the no water message, we can call this no water nearby. And now the messages are also translated. Now we can see that this packet has not yet been, you know, used anywhere. So we can, of course, have to well, basically build this. What I personally do is just I select the old message here duplicate it with control D. And then we can just change this to the drink water packet. And just change it over here because the names of the methods are basically always the same, at least for me, right, I usually want to, well, we usually want to call them the same. And now instead of making a new example packet in the client events right here, we just want to make a new drink water C2S packet over here. And that should pretty much be all that we need to do to add this. So now what we should be able to do is we should go near a body of water to the with a player, press O, and then we should hear the drinking sound as well as we could, we should be able to see, you know, basically drink water or drinking water. And if we're not near water, then we should see the message appear, you know, no water nearby. So that's pretty awesome. Let's go into the game and see if this works. Or it finds us back in Minecraft. So let's just stay away from all of the water and let's press O and no water nearby. This is a very, very good sign. And now let's go, well, you know, roughly next to the water and let's see. Drinking water. And what also happens is the the drinking water sound is also being played. So I can basically, you know, show like where the um, where the border is. You can see roughly here. So if it's like within three blocks ish. You know, then we are drinking it and then here we're not drinking it. So that's roughly the, you know, bounding box that we have, but it's really awesome already. So we can press a key, something happens on the server. And I mean, this is already very, very good progress and hopefully understandably explains some of what networking is all about. When it comes to the send to player message over here, right, where we send something from the server to the player itself, we're actually going to take a look at this, like I said, in the last tutorial of the four tutorial series over here, when we actually synchronize the thirst from the server to the client, because that actually is something that we have to do as well. But for the time being, this is going to be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. Oh, so, yeah.